Um, well, thanks everyone uh, for joining us, uh, you know, especially taking time out of your no doubt uh, hectic schedules in balancing home and uh, work life balance. Um, first of all, I just want to kick off and, and say on behalf of myself and my, my friends and partners here on the webinar, I hope everyone is staying safe and well and uh, with their loved ones or at least uh, connected with their loved ones. So yeah, let's, let's get started. Thanks again for joining our webinar today. Uh, we're going to be talking about your choices from Magento One, uh, from a Magento One point of view, and your, your choices from this point forward. We wanted you to know that you have options, and we've uh, collected a, a, a round of panelists here um, that I'll be you know, hosting and facilitating myself here. And we're happy to be presented and supported by Vertex, uh, the tax uh, calculations and, and online uh, tax company and WebScale, uh, which helps us with uh, ramping up and scaling uh, scaling e-commerce businesses. So let's go into our agenda for today. Now we, we have quite a lot to cover. Um, it's quite a, a complex, intricate uh, subject. So what we try to do is really simplify it for the sake of this webinar, uh, knowing full well that there's no way we could cover everything um, in, in, in such short a time. And we've given ourselves about 35 to 40 minutes on this webinar. So um, hopefully you can uh, stick around for that long. So we're gonna cover some three broad options um, and we want you to know that you have options. Uh, you're, you're not stuck uh, and, and there is a path forward and we want you to, to essentially understand the key considerations that we believe you should be you know, having in your head to understand the right options for you. We also wanna make sure that we are building a future-proof strategy um, that we're not just reacting to current um, markets or, or current, the current climate. And we're going to therefore touch on business continuity planning as a topic, um, which is you know, a, a, a several webinars in itself. And then we'll have time for, for some Q&A at the end. Uh, please feel free to you know, send your, your questions through uh, throughout the webinar. We'll be collecting them and moderating them. And uh, what we'll try and do is you know, pause throughout the webinar and see if we can answer any questions along the way instead of waiting for the very end, since uh, I know some of you may not be able to make it all the way to the end. So let, let's get going. So I mentioned our panel of experts. Now I'm happy to be joined by my, my colleagues and, and, and partners and friends from, from Vertex. Um, Nate um, is, our, is our panelist from the Vertex Consulting uh, Retail Practice. Nate has experience in ser several versions of the O-Series of Vertex and, and cloud connecting them, connecting them to a variety of point of sale systems and e-commerce platforms. I'm also joined by Adrian. Uh, he's uh, uh, the head of strategic partnerships at WebScale. Adrian focuses on infrastructure, security, availability, and performance to build a foundation for a healthy online storefront. And I'm your host, Ryan Shields from Mediotype, a Blue Acorn company, um, and I run strategy for the e-commerce division of Blue Acorn. Also wanted to let the, 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 the attendees know that we're not just uh, three talking heads, uh, you know, throwing out our opinions. We're aiming to provide not just opinion, uh, we wanna provide analysis, we wanna provide not just insights, we wanna provide action. And so we've teamed up with um, our internal teams and, and, and partner companies with Adweek. Uh, there's Capgemini research in there as well. Uh, we as an organization together with our partners, we do a great deal of research and publishing and publications and, and thought, um, thought leadership ourselves. And that has really been uh, the, 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 the nuts and bolts and, and the, the substance behind a lot of what, we've covered, what we are going to cover today. And I also have to point out that uh, you know, we as Blue Acon, we are the 2020 Emerging Solution Partner of the Year for Digital Experience uh, Enterprise in the Americas. Um, so we, we, we know a thing uh, or two about e-commerce and experience, experiential uh, e-commerce as well. So I mentioned those three options that we have uh, essentially come up with, and they are three broad options. And obviously that's very simplified generic options of do nothing, stay on M1, uh, and what are your options from there? Uh, the second option being migrate to Magento 2, upgrade to Magento 2. The third option being explore alternatives. Now, those are very, as I said, generic options. So what we've done is we want to make sure that we always view and we encourage our customers to view their business through both marketing or business as well as a technical lens. 
and the five considerations that we, I call them the five things that should be keeping you awake at night. Um, we are performance, user experience, data, integrations, and time. And we'll get into a definition of those uh, right now. So in terms of how we see things, we see performance as being twofold, both front end and back end. The, the performance end in terms of how the site is performing for your customers in terms of trying to complete a transaction. And performance from the back end in terms, in terms of your administrators actually trying to support the transaction and doing, doing their jobs on the back end. Uh, user experience, we believe UX drives feature needs and constantly pushes performance needs. And uh, we are all users. We know uh, we, we work the back end and the front end of systems every single day. Um, so we really see performance and user experience being very, very uh, a yin and, and, and the yang of, of the sites, of, of a site and optimizing it. Uh, data is your guiding star. You know, follow it relentlessly. Don't make any decisions without it. Uh, integrations, e-commerce is social. Let's make sure all your other systems are getting along. Um, and time, we all want things now and, and faster, and we want more. Are you able to keep up? And that's not just your customers, that's the, that's the expectations and the requirements of your team as well. So those are the definitions that, and, and through which we are gonna analyze with our lenses of marketing and technical. So the first um, option, as we said, is do nothing. Um, I chose a, an icon of an oven mitt there because um, you're going to have to be very careful handling uh, magenta wine once um, it is sunsetted um, in, uh, in in a couple of months here. So again, just sticking through, sticking with our our framework here, we're going to consider the option of doing nothing. We're going to consider it from a performance perspective, and we're going to look at it from a technical and a marketing lens. And we're going to have our, our panelists uh, weigh in here. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna turn to Adrian here to just talk about the, the performance impacts of doing nothing from a, a, technical, uh, a technical perspective. Yeah, thanks Ryan, I appreciate it. Um, you know, j just like the slide says, right, M M1 we all know is it's a resource hog. It's incredibly intensive and it, it requires, you know, a significant and robust hosting environment in order to achieve the high performance that you need to, to have a successful brand experience, right? So. Uh, I mean, the resources come at a cost and the cost is in hosting, it's in management, and that becomes exponentially more complicated with a platform that's now end of life. Um, so, you know, th things like database locking issues, things like uh, the, the lack of elastic search capabilities, um, things of, of having to manage the environment on a legacy PHP uh, version. I mean, all of these things contribute to just an overall uphill climb to optimize the environment for speed, so I I, I like the uh, the oven mitt right because it, it it's a pretty it's a pretty good analogy with what it's going to take you know to constantly fine tune the environment and make sure that you're achieving you know the the performance of your competitors. So um, I, I think we you know we can kind of segue performance really as it directly ties into into user experience. So it's uh, you know that's that's from the performance aspect um, and, and the monitoring and managing of, of the architecture you know, again, directly contributes to, you know, the end user experience. Yeah, no, thanks, Adrian. And, uh, you know, that ties directly into, you know, the, the, the box over to the right that the, the, the performance of your site really has direct impact on, on your SEO performance and, and therefore your findability uh, for the customers that you're, that you're searching for. So if they cannot find you, you're not going to find them. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, point taken for sure. Um, so let's move on to the next uh, criteria for consideration under the do nothing option uh, is user experience. Nate, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, sure. So when it comes to user experience too, you know, slower page speeds aren't just bad for your customers. They're tough on your resources as well. So from a technical perspective, that's something you definitely need to be aware of. Um, on the tax side of things here, you know, modern customers are going to expect their transactions to be flawless and quick. So that means making sure that your text calculations are seamless. Um, it is important to note here that all of the Vertex customers, um, you know, even if you're going to choose to do nothing, you're still going to get our unmatched content and research um, provided to you through your existing integration. Um, so that will allow you to stay up to date on any legislative changes and on top of things. But, you know, it's definitely something that you're going to want to be extra careful about, especially in today's environment. 
Exactly. And, you know, I would say even more than being careful is let the experts handle it. You know, don't, don't put that on your plate, take the things off your plate that you're not just trained to do. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't do brain surgery if it was on your plate, take it off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, there, there's just overall, you know, exactly what you guys talk about, right? There's just a need for speed. Um, so, I mean, it really fun stat really quick to kind of back up what we were just talking about. It, Every second of delay in page load times leads to an average of, you know, typically like 11% fewer page views, 16% uh, on average decrease in visitor satisfaction, which just equates to, to a loss in conversions, right? So, you know, again, there's definitely a need for speed that directly ties into conversions and revenue. Extremely important. Yeah. Well, perfect. Don't, don't stop talking because uh, this is your slide. Tell us about the, the data impact. Um, from a do nothing yeah. perspective. Yeah, and I, I think with you know with data, we're all in agreement, right? That data breaches are they're close to the top of worst case scenarios for a business and, and lack of, you know, with Magenta One end of life, lack of ongoing patches, again, older PHP versions, these are things that contribute to just an increased possibility of of malicious scripts finding their way into your code. I mean, we've seen some some incredibly large brands even be susceptible to to cross-site scripting attacks and things like that. Um, and it's not just bad news for what you see in the slides before for performance and user experience, but just the overall reputation of the brand itself. Um, you know, I just think as long as you're on Magento One, there just has to be a heightened level of awareness that's required and, and active management is a must and, and it's incredibly time consuming to, to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I want to move on from the slide quickly, but... Uh, unfortunately, I've had a lot of customers on M1 call me in a panic um, saying that we just got a, a very serious letter from a credit card processor or our payment gateway or whatever, saying that we are either not compliant or we're heading towards you know not being compliant. So data is not just about the breach. It's about keeping the authorities off your back, so to speak, because then that's a headache you don't want at all. All right, let's move on to the final consider, well, the, the, the second to last consideration on, on do nothing as an option. Uh, Nate, you want to take this? Yeah, sure. So um, we all know that it's a full-time job to keep up with the new tax formats and regulations. Um, international tax is getting more and more complex as are taxes in many specific industries. Um, so it, it's important to be proactive to ensure that you know, your integrations are able to accommodate um, all of the new compliance structures that you may be faced with. Um, and, you know, being vague is something that could definitely put off your customers as well. So if the customers have that expectation, then you have created a, a serious issue potentially for your customer service representatives. And as Adrian had said to potentially your entire brand. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, let's go to our um, final uh, consideration uh, time from a do nothing perspective. And um, I pulled this uh, graphic out of one of my, my favorite research tools. Um, and basically what this does is it, cons it aggregates all the order completes for certain search terms. So for the search term Magento one, uh, this is what I see as the amount of time and energy being spent and most likely being wasted on trying to map your way or navigate your way from this point forward. And it doesn't matter if you're on Magento One or whatever, whatever, whatever platform or whatever step uh, platform you're on right now, you should be asking your questions, what am I doing now to prepare for tomorrow? So I thought that this was just an interesting graphic in terms of showcasing that from an, an, an aggregate standpoint, globally, how much time is being spent on figuring out what's, what to do next. Um, and, and again, this is just for Magento. So, I wanted to, we also wanted to kind of put an, a bit of an asterisk on um, do nothing because there is a, a do something. And uh, essentially that is what we essentially an extended stay. So we, so, so to speak on Magento one with the uh, highlight of it being safely. So uh, Adrian, I think your best place to talk to that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. This is uh, th this was put in obviously as a one B, right? Because it's it's a bridge between where you are now and where you need to be, and and uh, we we added this option because there's scenarios where an M1 store would need to have 
more time for, for whatever reason, right? But the point is, is to have flexibility in your schedule to determine your next move with somebody like Mediotype that can guide you on the design and the development side for the next phase. But uh, important to note that even within this option, there's incredibly important things to consider. Um, any M1 continued support, it's more than just finding somebody to provide a patch for new, newly discovered vulnerabilities. There, there's security measures that need to include things like cross-site scripting protection I spoke about earlier, uh, intrusion detection, the ability to implement uh, web application firewall rule sets on the fly. Basically, a, like a true security shield with virtual patching capabilities for zero-day attacks while a true patch is being created. Uh, and then, of, co of course, what was alluded to earlier was, you know, PCI implementations and making sure that you maintain PCI compliance. So end of life doesn't necessarily mean that you have an immediate lack of compliance, but you have to have compensating controls in place, you know, for added web security, for scanning, for monitoring and planning. So um, this isn't to say that any of us have, you know, any type of, of offer with a silver bullet, but. Um, you know, working with, with the right companies can give you the tools that you need to help manage these things for you. So just to quickly wrap this, wrap this up, um, you know, you don't have to be pressured into making a rash decision. We want you to make the right decision in between, you know, web scale security, uh, end of life support, you know, uh, video types, uh, development capabilities. You know, you, you know that your current site is taken care of as we start to, to take that next step into understanding what's next for you. So. Um, you know, really a good segue into migrating into, into Magento 2. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that brings us to the option two, uh, which is, you know, probably the first option that uh, most consider is what is the path in the migration to Magento 2 look like? What am I getting? What am I you know, what are the hurdles? Is it a, a straight upgrade, et cetera? So lots, lots of different questions to cover there. So again, sticking with our framework, the option of migrate to M2 through the lens of technical and marketing, looking from a, a, a performance perspective. Um, Adrian, do you want to kick us off on performance of Magento 2 from WebScale's perspective? Yeah, yeah. We talked about some of the negative things about staying on the current platform. We can kind of flip those on their side, right? When we talk about building a new front on Magento 2 along with the latest PHP versions, right? It just allows for a more efficient use of resources. Um, you know, we, we've even seen server stress tests prove that Magento 2 is actually superior in handling traffic and processing requests. So you know, ultimately, I think a Magento 2 storefront can handle a significantly more orders per hour and maintain those fast page load speed times under a load because it's not just important to be fast. You have to be fast as traffic increases. So you know, we always say that visitor 100 needs to have the same positive experience as visitor 100,000. So just Magento 2, and I think you guys, uh, Ryan, can attest to this, right? It's just, it's friendlier to work with for the optimization of the cloud environment. And the same goes for, you know, the, the code as far as what you guys are, are optimizing on your side. Yeah, no, it's, it's a much more modern set of tools for modern commerce. Um, absolutely. So let's jump to the second consideration for my, the migrate to two option, migrate to Magento two option. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys a break break from talking here. So user experience, as you say, is directly uh, related to performance, and you know, having fast load times, quick transitions from page to page, just having that snappy snappy site um, is going to really make your users a lot more engaged with your site. That's what people ex that's what they expect. And it's going to help, you know, the user journey. You know, obviously, that's not everything. It's not just a fast site that's going to help, but it certainly is going to uh, alleviate a lot of the stress from your IT team uh, from having to constantly tweak a site to keep it performing at, at optimal page, page speeds. Um, and then, obviously, a positive user experience contributed to an overall positive brand experience. Uh, and nowadays, that also means accurate checkup prices, um, including obviously tax and tax calculations. So moving on to the third consideration, data um, for for the do sorry not the do nothing the migrate to Magento two. Um, Adrian, what do you what do you have to say about that? That's kind of your specialty. Yeah, I mean it's it's what we alluded to earlier, right? It's a it's a modern architecture in Magento two. Um, you know, again, we're we're allowed now to use current versions of PHP. 
Uh, there's regular patch support available. Uh, there's even things like improved algorithms for, for passwords that contribute to just an overall you know, minimizing of attacks and, and vulnerabilities. So you know, with, with an updated platform, you're really setting yourself up for success and mitigating risk overall. So you don't have to worry about the, the constant um, you know, break fix, fix issues you might have with a piece together, you know, Magento One solution that was built over a series of years. Uh, there, yeah. there definitely are tons of benefits to, to getting on, on Magento too. Yeah, yeah, you become a lot less uh, defensive uh, if you're then if you're on Magento One. If you're like you're you're, you're playing a whack a mole all day, just trying to you know, you know put everything you know put everything um, out before it becomes an issue. Uh, let's jump into integrations as the consideration um, for my migration to M2, Nate. Yeah, sure. So um, from Vertex's perspective on this too, you know, IT and your marketing or your finance departments, um, when you talk about the Vertex application, a lot of times those are two areas of the business that really have to kind of come together, um, you know, just with the nature of tax and the, the nature of, um, you know, the number of systems that need those accurate tax calculations. Um, so one of the things here that we, we want to make sure that everybody knows is that if you're moving from M1 to M2, and that means for you maybe a shift in the, the overall architecture of the direction that your IT department is kind of going in, uh, moving more and more applications out into the cloud. Um, you know, Vertex does have um, a very clear migration path for a lot of our customers that are moving from an on-premises O-series implementation into our on-demand instance, which is one of our cloud offerings. Got it. Got it. Um, and what does that mean, guys, from a time perspective? And, you know, again, from when, when we talk about time, it's how much time are we saving or how much time are we spending? What's the opportunity cost of spending time on one thing versus another? So I'd love to hear you, what you guys uh, say from a, a time saving or a time, you know, wastage point of view for migration to M2. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, bluntly put, right, a, a lot of Magento One stores have been just pieced together over the years, and it's just, it's been done out of necessity, right, and they've become a bear to continuously manage. We see that a lot when we're assisting in migrations, you know, moving these into the cloud, we get to really see how it was architected and, and built. Um, and, and just moving to Magento 2 just means less time spent in break fixing, um, less time yeah. spent supporting outdated extensions, things like that, so, yeah. It's yeah, just, yeah I I agree. We call them Frankenstein's or spaghetti or whatever. Um, and often, you know, Magento One is no long, you know, is 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 a, is hardly resembles Magento by the time you know it's got to this stage. So you know, it makes a a, a migration or an upgrade to Magento Two less of a consideration of Magento to Magento. It's from essentially a custom platform to Magento Two in, in this case. Um, Nate, what, what, what are your thoughts and inputs on uh, insights on, on time from a magician? Yeah, so exactly like both of you guys have said. So whenever you talk about moving from a system that's probably been around for a, a long time, has been integrated very well into your various um, you know, IT systems, you do get lots of customizations along with that. So whenever you talk about upgrading, that can obviously add to your timeline. Whenever you talk about either ripping out those customizations, getting back to more of a vanilla um, application or, um, you know, choosing whether or not to move those forward. So that could increase the time that it takes to implement. Um, one of the big things for Vertex is that we're going to also be a core bundled extension along with M2. So when it comes to building out these tax integrations and customizations, you've already gained a lot of headway by not having to build those completely from scratch. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just a shout out to uh, Vertex and Media Type Blue Acorn. We, we, we collaborated on building the integration with Magento 2 and maintaining it. So, um, you know, excited. It's, it's great to be working with you, with you guys on that. You know, and, you know, having worked myself on Magento 1 since Magento 1.1, you know, it, it was always, it's always had the reputation of being a beast and you need big, fat, beefy servers to handle it. Um, not only is that not true with, with uh, Magento 2, uh, with the introduction of Magento Cloud, they're offering, um, you essentially don't have to worry about the hosting side and it would obviously be in Magento's best interest to keep uh, the Magento 2 code base and footprint as lean as possible because you don't want to run, you know, you know, bloated code on, 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 on expensive servers. So, you know, 
with Magento 2, you get a lot more of a, a lean athlete in e-commerce than uh, a retired veteran, which we are very grateful for uh, his or her service <laughs> to get us this far. So uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, just wrapping up on, on Magento 2 as an option, you know, I think it, it's, a, it's a natural, I wouldn't say it's a natural upgrade because a lot of the Magento 1 sites are in pretty bad shape uh, when they come to us. Uh, but certainly the, 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 the move to Magento 2 is not just going to give you a facelift and access to a new admin. It's really going to unleash a lot more of a richer toolkit for your business. And with the bolted, with the core bundled extensions such as Vertex and, and a number of other extensions that are already part of, of Magento, you know, it, it really is turnkey, to, to, uh, so to speak, and uh, ready to go. So wrapping up on Magento 2 as an option, there always is option three, which is exploring alternative platforms. You know, we all know that there's other platforms besides Magento 1 and, and Magento 2. And essentially, the way that we see it is it doesn't really matter um, if, where you're coming from. Um, what you should be doing is really taking a, a cold, hard look at your business, uh, especially during these times, and looking at those three broad options of do nothing, stay on Magento 1, migrate to Magento 2 or select an alternative platform. Just make sure that you're doing it based on data and through the unique lens of your business, taking into account your technical team and your business and your marketing teams as well. So, you know, just making sure that you look at how an impact, how a decision is going to impact your performance, your user experience, which again are, are tightly linked. Um, what data implications are that, is that going to have? How how good is your data? How secure is your data? Um, do you have compliance issues now? Will you have compliance issues down down the road? Can your business afford a breach? Will you recover from that? Uh, what sort of integrations do you need out of the box? How flexible do you need the system to be? And how much time is it going to take for you to build all of that, put into it, maintain it, et cetera, et cetera? So, you know, just a couple of, um, you know, sound bites from the Vertex and the WebScale team is, you know, there, there's a lot of flexibility with a lot of the tools that, that are out there, uh, not just Magento. Uh, there's a lot of other, other tools out there. And we've seen an influx of, I too have seen an influx of hybrid and head, headless requests coming from merchants uh, where you may have uh, a Magento e-commerce engine and a completely different front end, um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, from a CMS standpoint or, or something completely custom. So you have options um, and what we wanted to, did you guys have anything to discuss that you wanted to pitch in here? No, just, just really adding on onto that. I think uh, some of those options that we've seen, I'm sure you guys have seen as well. We didn't even really get into some of the PWA discussion while we we're talking about Magento 2, but it does give you, you know, the ability to kind of decouple the front end and, and use Magento 2 as either more of a lightweight, you know, option for the back end and the complete custom front end. Um, but if we're talking in this case, as far as alternative platforms, um, you know, we've also seen an influx of, of you know, where, where custom front ends are, are created and then they, the back end is outsourced to a SaaS, right? Um, and it just, it, it comes out to just increased security. Um, and a lot of times these headless implementations and these, uh, you know, these, these progressive approaches you know, can actually give you a, a unique experience to your visitors since it could just be a lot faster, more efficient, and again, more secure. So there's, there's the, the options are almost limitless when we talk about alternative platforms. Exactly, exactly. Take, take an action, um, but to your point earlier, don't take a rash action just because, you know, Magento 1 is end of life. You know, don't, don't, don't panic. Don't, don't make a decision now that you're really going to regret, regret later. Um, you know, take, take the necessary time to work with the experts to help you, you know, go into the sunset gracefully. Um, Nate, do you have anything to add on, on, you know, just, you know, the, the alternative, alternative approach and, you know, not just being married to Magento? Yeah. So I think you had the, uh, the quote up there as well, but oftentimes whenever you're talking about migrating from one platform to the other, um, you know, that's a great opportunity to reevaluate your overall end to end processes, which that includes your tax calculations as well. 
Um, so Vertex does offer out of the box connections to a lot of the major e-commerce platforms, but even when there's not an extension or a connector available to you, you know, that's where a, a lot of, you know, my teams, uh, come into play. So, you know, Vertex Consulting is able to help you build those custom integrations, ensure that you're able to, to remain compliant and to, to still have that same access to the content that, that Vertex offers, even on whatever the platform is that you might choose. Um, and again, trying to, to go back to the, the user experience and the performance side of things, you know, we really are able to place that tax calculation as close as we can to the e-commerce platform, whether that's, you know, out in the cloud, whether that's on-premises, um, even offline um, calculation models are also something that we support. So it's just important for everyone to know that, you know, ma you, no matter what your um, answer is in all of this, um, that, you know, you're still able to, to take advantage of a lot of what Vertex is able to bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know, I personally don't find tax fun. Um, and Vertex has managed to make tax sexy for e-commerce, so congrats. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would much rather let the experts handle handle the tax part of my business. And you know, it's going to become more and more of a user expectation, and also more of a, more of a risk to alienate users if suddenly you you fall out of compliance and therefore some of their transactions are, are part of that non-compliance non-compliance scenario mm -hmm. hey ryan Great. it's probably a good time to 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 break for a couple of questions we just saw a few that came through before we move right. to, to what you have up here um one of the questions that came in is how do i know who to go to for support of my site where's the line drawn between developer and the host so I assume a lot of this alludes to, you know, your position in, in developing and the design of the site and obviously, you know, WebScale being a managed hosting provider and us managing the back end, right? So from an end user's perspective, how would you explain what that delineation looks like and, and how the support model looks? Well, you know, Magento One was mostly going to be an on-premise solution. So you had a variety of different hosts and vendors that you would use. So historically, and the way that I've always worked is the, the Magento uh, systems integrator, like MediaType, would, would really act as the liaison between the site and the customer and the host. And you know, we, we would always try and make sure that there wasn't a pointing fingers game because that's, it's just the age old kind of challenge of, well, it's the site's fault and the site's saying, no, it's the host's fault. So, you know, I, you know, with Magento 2 and other, other solutions out there, you know, I, I, I use the term one throw to choke. And, you know, it's, it's often, e the closer your developer is to your host, the better. Just like having your tax, your tax calculation, having a close to your, your, your shopping cart. You want to have them close. So make sure that you have a, a hosting vendor that you can hold accountable and, and that is going to engage with your systems integrator. Um, or, you know, choose a cloud solution and that throw it to choke essentially is Magento as a platform and, and, and the host. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I can obviously speak to the hosting perspective because, um, as you guys know, right, like we, we set up back channels with our partners to make sure that we have that constant line of communication. And we look at, at supporting an in merchant almost as a triangle where, you know, the, the SI is on one side, the host is on the other side, but together we have to support that client at the tip. So there's a lot of communication that has to go on between developer and the host to make sure that it is a, a finely tuned orchestration that just ultimately ends up in a good brand experience. So uh, good, good point on making sure that the, the host and the SI have to work together. I think uh, you know, it's yeah. incredibly important. Um, another question that came in, does Vertex just handle tax or do they also assist with, uh, with the complexities of shipping? That's to you, Nate. So uh, I, I don't think we have any desire to become FedEx, um, but I do think what this may be getting at here is uh, talking around the tax complexities of shipping charges. So um, yes, that is absolutely something that we do uh, handle within our solutions. So um, you know, various states have different rules around you know the mixes of you know what it is that you're selling. Are, are the items taxable? Are they exempt? So on and so forth, and that can impact shipping. Um, and that is content that we do support right out of the box. 
Um, so as long as the integrations are uh, giving the correct information and that you're able to reference, you know, what it is that's being um, shipped, then Vertex will handle that for you. Um, also, whenever you talk about things like the complexities of um, split shipments, so, you know, you're not fulfilling all the items at the same time, perhaps you're selling digital goods or you're selling physical items. Um, that that actually need to be shipped out. Um, again, that's another thing that just through the design of those integrations is something that's able to be handled. Um, the multiple ship from, you start dealing with omni-channel, you know, where are we sourcing this from? Are we shipping from a warehouse, shipping from a store? Um, those are all things, again, that Vertex is able to accomplish through our, our base integrations. Cool. Um, yeah, we can, we can move on, Ryan. I'm sure there'll be some more questions that, that pop in later during Q&A. Yeah, great. And, you know, just to wrap up this, this part of the webinar in terms of the, the options, we're about to frame the options in, in, in terms of reality in a second. Um, but really, no action is not an option. Don't put your head in the sand and think it's, you're going to be kind of missed in, and, and just be lucky. You know, you're going to become a target if you don't move on Magento 1. Partner up with an expert if you have to delay your migration to anything. Just get off of Magento 1. Um, Magento 1 is great. It's not dangerous in itself. It's just it's, it's time to move on. So do what's right for your organization. Consider the, the marketing, the business, and the technical um, aspects of how your business is, is, is impacted from a performance perspective, time, experience, user experience, data, and, and integrations. So hopefully that uh, was helpful as just to frame what you may be faced with, you know, the, the, the fork in the road from Magento 1 to the next point. Now we want to make sure that we are not talking in a complete vacuum, um, you know, outside of what is really happening in, in the world and essentially in the market that we are both, you know, working in and, and working with. So it's important to consider your current versus future state. And we really look at, or I really look at, the decision of Magento 1 to Magento 2 as a, for some it's inconvenient that, you know, that, that there has to be a migration at all or any move like that. Um, but it's a, you have to respond to that. And we've had the ability or, or the fortune to have seen this coming down the road in terms of the sunset. So we've, you know, the smart merchants have been able to come up with a, a, a response. And I would say the smart merchants are able to still have a response even if they are on Magento 1. The point is don't, don't react. Uh, you don't want to, um, during especially these times, these unprecedented times, you know, re re react and, you know, pivot in the wrong way or pivot out of panic, et, et, et cetera. You know, as a generation, we continue to experience massive shifts in our reality at breakneck speed. And we see some things coming, but a lot of the things that, um, that come and impact our business and like this global tsunami of COVID-19 that's hit us is, it's generation defining. So we, Pivot, if you will, is what I say, but accelerate where you must. You know, go and go and get, go and achieve those digital goals that you're maybe putting off. Now is the time, and get into a position where you will absolutely survive these times. But get into a position where you will thrive and be and, and be ready for whatever the new normal becomes. And therefore, you know, staying relevant right now and continuing to be flexible and and, and stay relevant has never been more crucial. And, you know, with, uh, with, you know, the market itself has responded really, really well, such as, you know, sales tax holidays in response to the COVID to boost the economy and get people buying again. I have a lot of customers that are doing very well during this time online. I have some customers that are, you know, their businesses are, are completely upended and they've had, they've had to pivot, but they're doing it through the lens of data and what is right for their business and they're not just having a, a knee-jerk reaction to things. Um, how are you guys seeing some of your customers, you know, respond during these times? Yeah, we've seen uh, we've seen a lot of shifts in movement. Uh, it's like you mentioned, right? It's been forced acceleration into the digital age. I mean, I think we've seen it most in in B two B, where we've seen a lot of guys in in the older ways of doing things, right? A lot of you know operations just being done on using pen and paper. Um, and now, you know, large portions of their fleet and, and their uh, employees, you know, can't make it into the office. And it, it's without having 
uh, you know, a more modern digital look and feel to even a, a B2B focused company. Uh, it makes it really difficult to continue, you know, managing day to day business. So we've had to, you know, to jump in and kind of help facilitate what that looks like, how to migrate into the cloud, how to, you know, how to jump into, again, the digital age, right? And that just can't be done without constant input from, you know, you guys, from, from us on the hosting and, and architecture side, um, from Vertex on, on the tax side, right? It's, uh, it, it's definitely an orchestration between, you know, multiple uh, companies to help, help clients out. But that's, that's really, we've seen a lot of changes in, in B2B. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing that shift too. You know, a lot more folks are, are seeing that shift in their e-commerce business. People are staying at home. They're not going out as much. So you mentioned, you know, using the things like the sales tax holidays, the, the local governments and things like that are, are trying to get people out there, get them shopping again, try to jumpstart things as a response to all of this. Um, but what that shouldn't mean for, for your business is that, you know, six months or a year from now, whenever you're going through your next audit, now all of a sudden you realize that you weren't able to be compliant during those sales tax holidays because things were out of date. Um, you know, you weren't able to keep up. You moved too quickly in order to try to get some of that. Now you've created all this unnecessary exposure. Um, you know, another shift that we're seeing right now is a lot of these um, different states and things like that are, are beginning to um, create laws around marketplace facilitators. So, so much business is being done through online marketplaces now that, you know, there, there's a, a real need for the, the governments to be able to go out there and capture a piece of the funds that are changing hands on those um, platforms. So you want to make sure again that when when it comes to audit, when it comes to compliance, when it comes to your monthly filings, that these are all things that you're staying on top of and being aware of in just the current environment that is facing retail today. Yeah, absolutely. No, well said. Well said. And you know, for me, it, it's all about this. This really boils down to business continuity. There is a decision that needs to be made with Magento One and your decision where if you don't make that decision, there is likely going to be a disruption to your business. With the current global circumstances with COVID-19, there is a unforeseen, invisible impact that is happening, but we're feeling it very, very materially and very physically. So it's all about your digital, digital preparedness and, and having the business continuity plan in place. And that doesn't happen overnight either. You don't just go and get one off the internet. Uh, it's something that you have to really think about and you know what is keeping you really have to kind of think about well what is keeping you up at night or what should be keeping you up at night because waking up and saying oh we just weren't ready is just really not you know you, know, you may as well shut your doors you know now uh, if they aren't already so things to con consider is you know how deep is your bench um, where is your bench now that everyone's working from home do you how many of your team can not sign in today before your business is impacted. Um, what would you have done differently had you known about COVID-19 coming and, and, and how, what would you have done to prepare? Obviously we don't have a, a crystal ball, uh, but I really hope that merchants who come through this um, in any shape or form realize that this was a wake up call to be prepared from a digital standpoint and really was a time when they accelerated their vision and made the right choices to get their business into a modern position where it will thrive and not just survive these things and be able to be resilient enough to handle you know unexpected events as well as you know market changes as, as they occur. So I, I, I encourage all my customers to really be a, become a student of their businesses now. Take a look at your numbers. Take a look at your, look at your metrics. Clean house. Get your house in order. Um, don't just pivot your business, really pivot your thinking um, and, and, you know, really lo lo lose, the, lose the dead weight on, on your business and on your, and on your website. Bring in the experts and focus on what you do best is, you know, making your customers happy, thrilling your customers and making sure and we'll make sure that your technology is, is a utility. It should just work when you switch it on. Anything else to add, guys? Honestly, when you say bring in your experts, I think that's that's a really important piece. Um, you know, you, you have people that have done this for other clients that maybe have made the jump before you in a similar space. So lean on people who have had experience in, you know, again, the, the, the less sexy part of the conversation, right? Back in architecture and, you know, the orchestration of resources. Nobody wants to have that conversation, but there are experts that know 
you know, what they're doing and have done it for similar clients. Same with, you know, in, in, in the tax space, same in the, uh, in the SI and in, in development and, you know, brand experience space. Right. So, you know, lean on, lean on companies around you to make sure that, that, you know, they're pulling on experience and can answer the questions that you may not even be asking right now. Yeah. Yeah. We've mentioned it a few times throughout the, the webinar here too, but you know, that, that whole shift to more of a, a cloud, um, you know, based architecture. So whenever you've got folks working remotely, you know, you're going to have to deal with new complexities around, you know, the, the security. Are you able to get into your corporate network? Are you, or do you have access to the systems that you need for those people to continue to do their jobs? Um, so we're, we're most likely going to be seeing a shift here where more and more organizations are going to be seeing um, the change to more cloud-based applications. And, you know, that, that whole concept of any device anywhere um, is going to be big for, for companies to make sure that they are ready in the future in case something like this were to come up or, um, you know, depending upon how long this goes as well, you know, just making sure that you are able to survive and thrive in this type of environment. Absolutely. And I, I think the right merchants, you know, becoming, becoming a student of your business, looking at your business during this time, you may actually uncover some new efficiencies where you didn't realize there were inefficiencies before, whether it's in managing your, your team's time or managing teams that could be remote where they are, are not remote. So again, this is, this is a time to really revamp your business. Uh, do it smart though. Um, avoid pivoting your business into something that is not sustainable or one day you wake up and no longer relevant. Uh, because it's very, very difficult to pedal back from that once, once you're in that position. Um, Adrian, how are we doing on questions there? Because uh, I think we've done pretty good on time here and, and we yep. have some time for, for a few more. Yeah, there's a couple here. And uh, I think, so the first one I'll, I'll take, so it says, how long can I stay on M1 with web scale support? Um, we talked about M1 continued support as a bridge till, you know, you make that decision on what to do next. Uh, but we've kind of put ourselves out there that for, you know, a minimum of the next 18 to 24 months that we're willing to, to kind of hold that over. But honestly, it really does lead right into the next question, which is for, for a basic M1 website, um, how much monthly budget should I allocate towards keeping the site maintained and secure? Um, it, it's, it's difficult to put a number on that. I mean, I think on average, we're kind of seeing, you know, maybe a 35 to 40% increase to to currently manage and provide patches and improve security and all of that for, for an existing M1 store. But that's all the more reason to, you know, use that as a really solid bridge while we work with an SI to really, you know, walk through what the next phase of, a, of an online brand should look yeah. like um, and, and, and use it honestly as, as that bridge to, you know, to get you to the next step. So yeah, there, there is, there is going to be a cost for it. Yes, we can extend it for, you know, a significant period of time, again, 18 to 24 months or so. But um, Ryan, what, what are you guys seeing as far as, you know, developing uh, a new storefront, how long that takes and, and budgeting? Yeah, yeah we, we have a number of merchants that were, you know, I always used to say, well, hey, we're just going to keep the lights on on your site um, while we move you over. And I would say we're, we're doing that. And then what I refer to as lighthouse keeping. So you, you, you turn into a, you have to build in a layer of defense and monitoring to fend off any threats before they even make it to your site. So, you know, what we're offering and what we provide all of our customers is, you know, e-com scan, e you know, uh, traffic scanning. I'm sure WebScale does the same, it provides the same level of monitoring and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, for us, you're, you're, the, the, the clock starts really ticking once the sunset event occurs. And there's going to be no guarantees of, uh, we could say, hey, you need a budget 10 grand a month um, or what, add 30% to whatever you're currently spending on, on M1 maintenance. But if a breach occurs tomorrow, that all goes out of the window and it, it take, it'll cost as much as it costs to get you, to get you done. So we have parallel projects or parallel um, engagements with clients where we're doing that defensive lighthouse keeping for Magento 1 while getting them to Magento 2 as quickly as possible. Uh, we don't have anyone that's just on Magento 1, you know, just hanging around. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't have any more questions that were, that were typed in the box. So for anybody that's joining, uh, we do have time available. It looks like we got 10 more minutes or so. If anybody wants to throw any questions in there, um, we can. 
Ryan and, and Nate, is there anything that we may have skipped over for the sake of time when we were going through this early on that we want to expound on a bit, especially in the, in the Migrate to Magento 2 piece or even the alternative platforms? Um, not necessarily something we skipped over. It's something that I, I hoped that we would have time for is, as I mentioned uh, a couple of slides ago, the, the market and, and the indus and industry as a whole in government, I think is responding tremendously well to, to all of this. And, you know, what, I, what I'm seeing is that you should be able to get into a position where you're getting, well, A, do your research on getting, you know, stimulus um, money because of all of this. So make sure that you work with experts there. We can help you with get, getting experts uh, lined up to talk on, you know, how to get through this and then make sure that you have the budget in place to do what you need to do once you get through this as well. Um, the other, the other thing is that a lot of the, a lot of, um, Magento shops like us, we have what we call accelerator packages. So they don't have to be these three, six, nine, 12 month long Magento builds. Um, if, even if you're not on Magento one, or if you're on something else, we can stand you up on Magento in a very rapid period of time. And again, Magento comes bolted on and, and, and with core bundled extensions like Vertex, et cetera, where we can deploy uh, a Magento site very, very quickly um, at, at a, at a you know, lower cost to what we normally would as well, uh, because we're moving, we're in the mode of making sure that we, we aid our customers and our new customers and you know, people yet to be customers with that digital preparedness. So we want to make sure that there is a, um, there's a very, very easy entry point into getting onto Magento too. Um, and it's not just a reactive move. It's a responsive and responsible move and it gets your foot in the door or gets your, you know, you get a rung on the ladder as you, you know, migrate and as you move through, your digital journey and, and, and graduate onto more mature platforms. No, absolutely. Really, really good point, man. We just, we just had another question that, that popped through. So uh, this one will probably do, be directly to you, Ryan, but thoughts on Salesforce commerce cloud uh, versus M2 as a replacement platform for M1. Is that something you guys have, have jumped into? Yeah. You know, um, I'm actually going to slide back to, um, this slide here is it does you know i would say yes it's the it's the best solution for your business if it checks the boxes from a, a, a marketing and a technical standpoint and is going to add incremental performance gains user experience gains it's going to handle your data better um it's got built-in integrations or is flexible enough to be integrated with your other tools in your system because, you know, Magento, no, no e-commerce platform sits on its own and just does its thing. It's again, e-commerce is social. It, it interacts with everything. Um, and then how long is it going to take to move to Salesforce? Uh, how long are Salesforce commerce cloud engagements? Uh, what is the ongoing maintenance? All of those things, look at it as, as a, you have to look at the total cost of ownership as well. So sure, I think Salesforce Commerce Cloud is a great solution if it's right for your business. Yep, and on our side, we, we have seen some of those solutions be implemented, um, but, but also lack some of the, the security features and, and some of the things that they were looking at to shield that environment directly from you know, the, the front end web traffic. So um, you know, we, we have deployed over the top of, of a SaaS solution like that in order to, you know, to provide just that added layer and that hybrid solution between the two, right? To still have the luxury of, uh, of visibility of all incoming traffic and the management of a firewall and, and all of that um, across the, the front of Salesforce Commerce Cloud. So that's pretty much the extent of where, where we've integrated with it and, and seen, again, that hybrid solution. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of the fun part of the way things are, are going now, right? There's it's the opportunities for, for so much now. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that's another, 
Yeah, yeah that is another one of the platforms um, that Vertex does integrate with. Um, we do offer a connector there. Um, it is not a core bundled extension, but we do have pre-built integrations that may help assist, um, like Ryan said, if you decide that that is the right move for your business. Um, so you would be able to continue to use Vertex, um, hopefully in an accelerated capacity, if that was the decision. Yeah, you know, and I'm a firm believer that every every tool, every platform should have not more than one or two jobs. And Magento is your e-commerce ax. And, but it's not gonna be a very good screwdriver. So you need to make sure that you've got your, the right toolkit and, and, and they're gonna get the job done. So you need to make sure that, and, and Salesforce as a, as a CRM is fantastic. And we have a lot of Magento uh, Salesforce CRM integrations. Um, so, you know, that's, that helps you get that 360 degree view of your customer, you, you know, just from a CRM perspective as a whole. So again, Magento plays very nice, even across the, the proverbial aisle. Um, and, and, uh, you know, I've integrated Magento with a fax machine before. So Magento plays nice. Uh, and one of the last questions that came in here, I'm not sure we'll be able to answer it, but is it known how many sites will be on M1 Enterprise Edition post EOL? So in other words, how, how large will the Magento One Enterprise community be beyond end of life? Have you seen those numbers, Ryan? I haven't. Um, all I will say is I would anticipate it shrinking either by migration or by um, disappearance. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know if we have the exact number. Uh, well, I, I don't have the exact number, but I'm not sure if we'd be able to put something on that. That'd be interesting to jump in and take a look at. Um, we, we can possibly use that as a fast follow up when. Uh, yeah, when I'm, I'm sure Ms. Janso knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was the last question that came in. We're like two minutes up here. Uh, if you want to get get everything wrapped up. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to you know, hit the time and, and have time for questions. So again, thanks to everyone who took the time uh, to join uh, from, I, I would assume, home office. Uh, we wish everyone well and, and safe and healthy. And please do reach out to us uh, via the, the uh, emails in the, in the invite that you, that you used. Uh, we'll also be doing some follow-ups uh, just uh, via email, et cetera please feel free to get back to us or, or reach out to us on, on anything whatsoever. Uh, me from a, a kind of high level strategy standpoint, Adrian from a, a, a technical standpoint, uh, as well as Nate from a technical standpoint. Um, but you know, Adrian for a, a hosting and a traffic and a scalability and security standpoint and, and Nate from a tax and a compliance and, and, and all, all that goes with that standpoint. So uh, hope to hear from, um, hope to hear from you soon. And, We'll be doing this again and, and talking about another, another topic soon in another episode. So thanks very much. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it, Ryan.